Hello friends, this is the Urdu Free Thinker. Many Muslims claim that Islam is a religion of justice, peace, and equality, and that the Quran is a book of wisdom and guidance. The Quran, as it is believed to be the word of the all-merciful, all-knowing creator, is claimed to be for all places in all times, even applicable for the 21st century. This is the reason why the Qur'an is considered the root of the constitutions of several Muslim countries today. It is the source for laws for several Islamic countries, and consequently it governs Muslims and non-Muslim citizens of these Islamic republics. This means that today many Muslims and non-Muslims are subjected to the social norms, conduct, laws, rewards and punishments outlined by the Qur'an. Naturally, one would expect a just and fair constitution to respect the rights and privileges of all its citizens irrespective of their personal beliefs or political affiliations. Such constitutions are common in many Western secular republics. Let's look at Canada as an example. According to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which forms the part of the Canadian Constitution, there can be no discrimination based on race, gender, sexual orientation or religion. But is the standard true for the Quran as well? Does Quran compare to other rival constitutions of the 21st century? The Quran divides humanity into two distinct groups, unbelievers kafirin and believers mu'minin. But does the Quran respect and treat the unbelievers fairly and forbids discrimination against them? Does the Quran demand treating the unbelievers with love, compassion, dignity and respect? Now. Let's listen to what the Qur'an says about the unbelievers. As to those who reject faith, it is the same to them whether you warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing, and on their eyes as a veil. Great is the penalty they incur. Allah will throw back their mockery on them and give them a rope in their trespasses so they will wander like blind ones. But if ye cannot, and ye surely cannot, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones which is prepared for those who reject faith. And now that there has come to them a book from Allah, how are they treating it? Even though it confirms the truth already in their possession, and even though they had prayed for victory against the unbelievers, and yet, when a book came to them, and they recognized it, they refused to acknowledge its truth, Allah's curse be on the unbelievers. Miserable is the price for which they have sold their souls, and that they deny the revelation which Allah has sent down, in insolent envy that Allah of His grace should send it to any of His servants He pleases. Thus, they have drawn on themselves wrath upon wrath, and humiliating is the punishment of those who reject faith. Whoever is an enemy to Allah and his angels and messengers, to Gabriel and Michael, Allah is an enemy to those who reject faith. They are the ones who buy error in place of guidance and torment in place of forgiveness. <laughs> what boldness for the fire. Their doom is because Allah sent down the book in truth, but those who seek causes of dispute in the book are in a schism far from the purpose. Fight in the cause of Allah against those who fight you, but do not transgress limits, for Allah loves not transgressors. And slay them wherever you catch them, and turn them out from where they have turned you out, for tumult and oppression are worse than slaughter. But fight them not at the sacred mosque, unless they first fight you there. But if they fight you, slay them. Such is the reward of those who suppress faith. But if they seize, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Keep on fighting them until mischief ends and the way prescribed by Allah prevails. But if they desist, then know that hostility is directed only against the wrongdoers. Fighting is prescribed for you, and you dislike it. But it is possible that you dislike a thing which is good for you, and that you love a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows, you know not. On no soul does Allah place a greater burden than it can bear. It gets every good that it earns, and it suffer every ill that it earns. Pray, our Lord, condemn us not if we forget or fall into error. Our Lord, 
lay not on us a burden like that you bestowed on those before us. Our Lord, lay not us on a burden greater than we have the strength to bear. Blot out our sins, grant us forgiveness, have mercy on us. You are our protector. Help us against those who stand against faith. Those that reject faith, neither their possessions nor their numerous progeny will avail them against Allah. They are themselves fuel for the fire. Say to those who reject faith, soon you will be vanquished and gathered together in hell, an evil bed indeed to lie on. Let not the believers take for friends or helpers unbelievers rather than the believers. If any do that, in nothing will there be help from Allah, except by way of precaution that you may guard yourself from them. But Allah cautions you to remember Himself, for the final goal is to Allah. O you who believe, take not into your intimacy those outside your ranks. They will not fail to corrupt you. They only desire your ruin. Rank hatred has already appeared from their mouths. What their hearts conceal is far worse. We have made plain to you the signs if you have wisdom. O you who believe, if you obey the unbelievers, they will drive you back on your heels and you will turn back from faith to your own loss. Soon shall we cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, for that they joined companions with a law for which he had sent no authority. Their abode will be the fire, and evil is the home of the wrongdoers. Let not the unbelievers think that our respite to them is good for themselves. We grant them respite that they may grow in their iniquity, but they will have a shameful punishment. Let not the strutting about of the unbelievers through the land deceive thee. Little is it for their enjoyment. Their ultimate abode is hell. What an evil bed to lie on. Those who reject our signs, we shall soon cast into the fire. As often as their skins are roasted through, we shall change them for fresh skins, that they may taste the penalty for Allah is exalted in power and wise. O you who believe, take not for friends and protectors those who take your religion for mockery or sport, whether amongst those who receive the scriptures before you, or among those who reject faith. But fear ye Allah if you have faith. But those who reject faith and belly our signs, they shall be companions of the hellfire. And those that doubt say, why is not an angel sent down to him? <laughs> if we did send down an angel, the matter would have been settled at once and no respite would have been granted to them. Who does more wrong than the one who invents a lie against Allah or rejects his signs? Though verily the wrongdoers shall never prosper. Of them there are some who pretend to listen to thee, but we have thrown veils on their hearts, so they understand it not, and deafness in their ears. If they saw every one of the signs, not they will believe in them, insomuch that when they come to thee, they but dispute with thee. The unbelievers say, these are nothing but the tales of the ancients. Those who reject our signs are deaf and dumb, in the midst of darkness profound. Whom Allah wills, he leaves to wander. Whom he wills, he places on the way that is straight. But those who reject our signs, them shall punishment touch, for that they cease not from transgressing. Leave alone those who take their religion to be mere play and amusement, and are deceived by the life of this world. But proclaim to them this truth, that every soul delivers itself to ruin by its own acts. It will find for itself no protector or intercessor except Allah. If it offered every ransom, none shall be accepted. Such is the end of those who deliver themselves to ruin by their own acts. They will have for drink only boiling water, and for punishment one of the most grievous, for they persisted in rejecting a law. Who can be more unjust than he who places a lie on a law, and who says, Revelation has come to me, when in fact nothing was revealed to him, and who says, I will produce the like of what Allah has revealed, 
If you could but see the wrongdoers in the agonies of death, and the angels stretching out their hands, saying, Yield up your souls. Today you will be recompensed with the chastisement of humiliation, for the law you spoke concerning a law, and for you waxing proud against his signs. We too shall turn to confusion their hearts and their eyes, even as they refuse to believe in this in the first instance, we shall leave them in their trespasses to wander in distraction. And the people of the fire will cry out to the people of paradise, Pour out some water on us, or throw at us something of what Allah has bestowed upon you. The people of the paradise will reply, <laughs> Allah has forbidden them to the deniers of the truth. If you could only see when the angels take the souls of the unbelievers at death, how they smite their faces and their backs, saying, Taste the penalty of the blazing fire. O you who believe, take not for friends or protectors, your fathers and your brothers, if they love infidelity above faith. If any of you do so, they do wrong. O prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and be firm against them. Their abode is hell, an evil refuge indeed. Then on the day of judgment he will cover them with shame, and say, Where are my partners concerning whom you used to dispute? Those endued with knowledge will say, Look, this day the unbelievers are covered in shame and misery. But those who are blind in this world will be blind in the hereafter, and most astray from the path. It is he whom Allah guides that is on true guidance, but he whom he leaves astray, for such will you find no protector besides him. On the day of judgment, we shall gather them together, prone on their faces, blind, dumb, and deaf. Their abode will be hell. Every time it shows abatement, we shall increase from them the fierceness of the fire. Verily you unbelievers and the false gods you worship besides Allah are fuel for hell, to it you shall surely come. These two antagonists dispute with each other about their Lord, but those who deny their Lord for them we will cut out a garment of fire, over their head will be poured out boiling water. So verily you cannot make the dead to hear, nor can you make the deaf to hear the call, when they show their backs and turn away. When our signs are rehearsed to such a one, he turns away in arrogance as if he heard them not, as if there were deafness in both his ears, announce to him a grievous penalty. The day that their faces will be turned upside down in the fire, and they will say, Woe to us! Would that we had obeyed Allah and obeyed the Messenger! When the yokes will be around their necks, and the chains, they shall be dragged along. O you who believe, Turn not for friendship to people on whom is the wrath of Allah. Of the hereafter they are already in despair, just as the unbelievers are in despair about those buried in graves. Their eyes will be cast down, ignominy will cover them, seeing that they had been summoned aforetime to bow in adoration, while they were whole and had refused. Their eyes lowered in dejection, ignominy covering them, such is the day the which they are promised. Those who reject the truth among the people of the book and among the polytheists will be in hellfire. To dwell therein, they are the worst of the creatures, they are the worst of the creation. So does the Quran teach compassion, love and respect for the unbelievers? No, in fact the complete opposite. The Quran is filled with passages that mocks and curses the unbelievers and threatens them with punishment in this life and the life to come. These unbelievers are hurled with insults and called deaf, dumb, and blind. They're not only compared with monkeys and apes, but also called pigs and donkeys. And forget about marrying the unbelievers. Many Quranic passages even justify the lack of worthiness of the kafir for love and friendship, and instead justifies their worthiness for scorn, shame, and eternal divine torture. The Quran otherizes fellow human beings, leading to a total loss of compassion for them, 
just because of their doubts and their lack of belief. It is not surprising, therefore, that any government that adopts the Qur'an as its constitution will inevitably keep their non-Muslim population as second-class citizens, who will remain underprivileged and live in a form of humiliating coexistence. For instance, in Pakistan, a non-Muslim cannot become a prime minister. In the Constitution of Pakistan, it says, a person shall not be qualified for election as president unless he's a Muslim. And in the Constitution of Pakistan, Article 91, it says that a prime minister must also be a Muslim. As discriminatory as this is, this Islam is relatively better when compared to the Islam of the 7th century and medieval times. In the present Islamic republics, such as Iran and Pakistan, non-Muslims at least have the right to vote and pick their leaders. However, in the original Islamic state, the Rashidun Caliphate, or the state of Medina, the Caliph was selected by an elite group of Muslims, and non-Muslims did not participate in this process at all. Imagine if this was done to Muslims. Imagine a society where Muslims were not allowed to vote and couldn't run for government positions. Imagine a society where citizens were told not to befriend Muslims and to keep a close eye on their behaviors. A society where the constitution calls Muslims deaf, dumb, and blind, pigs and monkeys, and the worst of all creatures. Such a society would be considered unjust and immoral by our current standards. But this is common in the Islamic world. This is the essence of Islamic belief. This is what the Qur'an teaches. Can anyone call this wisdom, fairness, or justice? One thing is certain. In order for our species to leave the small planet and expand beyond its limits, we must first let go of our small, crude, and petty religions and ideologies, including Islam.